The latest edition of Newsweek has an eye-opening, heartbreaking feature article about child abuse allegations here in New York City. It involves the Hasidic community. The article is called The Chosen, how the Jewish ultra-Orthodox school system muzzles survivors of child abuse and protects the criminals who prey on them. Many alleged survivors came forward to tell their story, but to date there have been no prosecutions. Elijah Wolfson is the senior editor at Newsweek and is also the author of the article. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having thanks me. For here, thanks for coming here, Elijah. Now, you said that it took you a year to write this? Yeah, I started uh, about a year ago. Um, I was originally actually reporting a completely different story. Um, I wanted to look at the well, mental and emotional health issues okay. of people who are transitioning out of that community. And I started hearing a lot of the same names, a lot of the same stories of abuse growing up, and I uh, decided to investigate it. Why was it, why did you choose this story? How, why was it important for you? Um, I mean, I think that it's important to open up a venue for people to talk about it. And the more people that talk about it now, the more people that will be able to come forward with abuse allegations yeah. in the future. And, uh, you know, my goal is, is ideally to protect kids who are in schools now. Were you surprised to hear about all the stories? Um, I was, I, well, I was more surprised to, to hear about the tenor of the stories. I mean, abuse, I, I don't think child abuse is more mm -hmm. common necessarily in the Hasidic community, I think it's it happens everywhere. The issue to me was more how it was handled and the ways that they suppress people from coming forward to tell and the truth. And how did they do that? Uh, all sorts of pretty uh, staggering things. So people would be threatened, parents would be threatened with expulsion, that their kids would be expelled if they went to the authorities. From the school? From the schools. They, people who did come forward were often ostracized from the communities. Their kids would not be able to get married. So that's a big thing for them because there's arranged marriages in the community, in, in many parts of the communities. And so you'd be threatened by uh, the community saying, you won't, your kids won't get married if you come forward. So it wasn't just expulsion from the school, but from the community in general as well. Yeah, completely. You'd essentially be excommunicated. And what does that mean for someone who is not familiar with the Hasidic community? How essential is it to be part of this group? Right, yeah, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely key. You're yeah. right. They, because of the way that the community supports each other, which is one of the amazing things about the Hasidic world, is yes. they are very supportive. But when that support fails, there's really no, there's no backup, there's no safety net. So the people who do get kicked out end up really lost. Right, and you've heard a ton of stories, right, from different uh, alleged victims. Do they follow, a, a, you know, the same pattern? Yeah, there are certain patterns. So kids who come from troubled families are often at higher risk. Uh, kids who maybe their parents are divorced or maybe um, are already acting out. And one of the reasons is that those kids tend to be less believed when they do come forward with allegations, so they're seen as easy targets. So that's one pattern you see in terms of the victims. Um, and then, you know, in terms of the process of how it gets suppressed, absolutely, you know, it's the same story over and over again. Kids tell their parents, their parents are concerned, their parents go to the doctors or the rabbis or the heads of the schools, and at that point, they're told to keep it quiet. Do you think that at this point in time, when we've heard so much about abuse in the Catholic Church, right, and how that sort of become, it became unfolded, do you think that there is um, less resistance within the Hasidic community, for, you know, to not report these crimes? Do you think they're better at, um, you know, treating these claims and these allegations? Well, I think in general, as a society overall, it, we have really progressed in the way we understand mm -hmm. and deal with child abuse issues. Mm -hmm. And that pattern has occurred in this community as well, although I think at a much slower pace. I don't necessarily think the Catholic Church scandal pushed them, um, but you know, I do. I have seen improvements, or you see improvements just by talking to people from different, you know, kids who grew up in the 80s versus kids who grew up in the 90s and kids who grew right. up now. Um, but there are still a lot of problems. And what is Jewish Community Watch, Watch dot org? Is that a website? Uh, yeah, so Jewish Community Watch is a organization that started as actually the Crown Heights Community Watch. And they their mission is to provide services to survivors of child abuse. Um, 
they are well known for what they call the wall of shame, which they have on their website, which is essentially uh, people that they've investigated and have determined are uh, abusers in the community. Um, but they also provide services for survivors. And finally, one last question. All but one of the survivors mentioned in your story are males. Do you see why that is the case? Yeah, well, you know, the Hasidic community is so male-centric that in a lot of ways, I think the people who are coming out are men. I don't, I have no way to tell if girls are also abused in, right. this, in these and systems. And because so few of them come forward and they're afraid to, or they're afraid Yeah, I just think the they're, they're even less, well, t let me walk that back a little bit, because one of the actual bigger issues, and this is sort of surprising, but... The men or the, the boys growing up actually get less of a secular education than the girls. And so in some ways, they're actually less prepared to deal with issues like sexual abuse because they don't get any sex education. They often don't even get an education in English language or math or science. Right. Okay. And so they're not prepared when abuse happens to acknowledge it or recognize it. Or